Understanding time and temporal relationships is a critical element in the quest for interpreting the geologic record. Geologists need to know the time of a given event relative to other events in order to come to a more complete understanding of the history of the Earth and the forces involved in shaping it. As geologists unravel the sequence of events that formed the Earth, questions about the length of time each event represents as well as the relative age of events can be answered. Past geological events that have helped to form and shape the Earth's surface are recorded in rocks. One major type of rock, sedimentary rock, records the deposition of sedimentary material at the Earth's surface. Wind and water carry material that is deposited into horizontal layers called strata, as illustrated by these ripples created by blowing sand. The result over time is that multiple layers of material accumulate, one on top of the other, each representing an interval in time. When geologists examine the stratigraphic sequence, they can assume that due to the principle of superposition, each layer is younger than the one beneath it and older than the one above it. Vertical thickness is an indicator of the passage of time. Not only are the sedimentary events in order from bottom to top, but the thickness of sediment in each layer is an indicator of the length of time represented by the sequence. It is unusual to be able to apply a specific date to a layer of sediment. Sometimes a fossil or a volcanic ash layer is used to fix the date of strata that they are found in, but most layers contain none of these and are not directly datable. However, by using a stratigraphic sequence, a geologist can learn a great deal about the ages of all the layers by dating only two of them. If it is also known that the rates of deposition were fairly constant, the relative age for another layer can be determined. For example, a layer located halfway in between two dated layers would also have an age halfway between the two. Geologists can also determine how fast sediments were accumulating in a sequence. With two dated layers and a measured true thickness between, it is an easy calculation to determine the sedimentation rate. This rate is an indicator of how fast faults are moving, how fast mountains are being uplifted, and how rapidly basins sink. The geologist can now talk not just about events, but event rates. The key measurement is the thickness of strata, and measurement of this thickness is easy when layers are horizontal. But what if geologists encounter bedding that is no longer horizontal, where the time axis no longer corresponds with the vertical axis? These lake sediments were deposited about four million years ago, and they have some features we're really interested in. You can see the sand beds in the lake sediments and also some silt beds that have been deformed probably by earthquakes. But the thing we're most interested in are these ash beds. You can see there's a light gray layer just above the sand. Now these ash beds came from volcanoes, not too far away probably, and the best thing about ashes is they allow us to date the section. Now we know from basic geologic principles that sediments are always deposited horizontally, but it's really easy to find sediments that aren't horizontal now. The forces of plate tectonics have folded, faulted, and bent these sediments, and so now they tilt, especially here around Reno, near the Sierra Nevada. Now what we have to do is measure the tilt of these sediments so that we can accurately measure the thickness of our section. And what I'm going to use is a clinometer and a plate to mimic the angle of bedding. I place the plate on the bedding and measure the angle, and I can measure it quite accurately. The angle is 31 degrees. And that means that our vertical axis here is also tipped 31 degrees off the vertical. Now we can't measure that directly. It's a loose slope and dangerous to climb on. What we can do instead is very accurately measure a section along this road, construct some simple right triangles, do a little trigonometry, and calculate the thickness of our beds. Now we need an accurate distance for that, and to get that we're going to use an electronics distance measuring device, which uses a laser to measure the distance to our target. Cheryl, I put the target on that ash bed on number 27. Why don't you go ahead and shoot that? Okay, that makes distance.
distance to target one, 29 meters. With the clinometer, we can measure the angle from the horizontal to the strata, here 31 degrees. Next, we measure the distance from one stratum to another. From these two bits of information, we can establish a right triangle and through the use of trigonometry, determine the length between point B and C. This strata sequence is measured true thickness. In a right triangle such as the one shown, the sine of the angle theta is equal to the length of the side opposite to it, BC, divided by the length of the hypotenuse, AB, here 129 meters. Since we want to find BC, we multiply both sides of this equation by AB. The result is that BC equals AB times sine theta. In our example, then BC equals 129 times the sine of 31 degrees. Our calculator tells us that sine 31 degrees is 0.515, so we find that BC equals 66.4 meters. That makes the strata thickness 66 meters. Great, now all we gotta do is date those ash beds. A lot of fairly complicated geology like this can be resolved using some pretty simple mathematical principles. The example that you've seen illustrated here today only begins to scratch the surface of mathematical applications related to scientific exploration. Mathematics is a powerful problem solving tool. In this example, trigonometry was employed to determine the thickness of a stratigraphic sequence. This information helps geologists come to a more complete understanding of the sequence of events that have formed the Earth. This application is just one of many examples of math in action.